We gather together this evening in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another love one another as he loved us. Write this commandment on our hearts and give us the will to serve others as the one who was the servant of all. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the 12th chapter of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly it is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Psalm 116. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. 
How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? second reading is from the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do that as, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Well, good evening. Squiggles was just saying that because it's a special night, they wanted to hear a story about it. So we're going to have a story from our Spark Bible on page 462, if you have a Spark Bible at home. And this is a story called The Last Supper. And we're going to talk a little bit about what this special night is. This is a day that we call Maundy Thursday. Kind of a silly, silly name. We're going to talk about that in just a couple minutes. But let's read the story first. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world. He wanted to share his last Passover meal together with his 12 closest friends, the disciples. 
Jesus loved his friends and wanted to show them his love in a very caring way. As the friends got ready for the meal, Jesus put water in a large bowl and knelt down on the floor. He wanted to wash the feet of his each disciple. When it was Peter's turn, Peter said to Jesus, You will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, Peter, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will later. Peter loved Jesus so much that he said, Then not just wash my feet, but my head and my hands also. Peter wanted to be as close to Jesus as possible. And there's squiggles down in the bottom, right by Peter's feet, while Jesus is washing them. As they were eating, Jesus sadly told his disciples, Soon one of you will betray me. One of you will tell people who don't like me where I am so that they can take me away. This upset the disciples, and each one said, It's not me you're talking about, is it? When Judas said this, Jesus, Jesus gently replied, Yes, Judas, you will betray me. Then Jesus picked up a loaf of bread, he blessed it, and he gave some to each of his friends saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body. Then Jesus picked up a cup of wine. He gave thanks and he said, Drink this. This is my blood, which I must give up so that for the sins of the people may be forgiven. Those words sound kind of familiar, don't they? When we're in church and we take communion, we say those same words. When the meal was over, Jesus and his friends went to a place called the Mount of Olives. Jesus said sadly, Soon you will all leave me. Peter felt bad. Even if all others leave you, I won't, he said. Jesus looked at his dear friend and said quietly, Before the sun rises, you will pretend you didn't even know me three times. Peter said, Jesus, I love you too much to ever do that to you. And all the disciples said the same thing. Now down here, there's a little task that says, what can you do to show people that you love them? And that's talking about what Jesus did in his uh, lesson for today. He was showing his disciples how much he loved them. Now what can you do to show people you love them? Let's talk a little bit about what Monday Thursday is all about in our children's message coming right up. So Monday, Thursday, you know, when I was a, a little boy, I used to thought, think it was called Monday, Thursday. Uh, and I don't know why, but it, that sounds very much alike, but it's Maundy Thursday, Maundy Thursday. And Monday is a, um, a Latin term that means mandate. And when Jesus gathered his disciples together, he had a Passover meal with them and he shared the bread and wine with him, much like we do when we're in church together. We share the bread and wine together. But then he gave them a mandate and he gave them a command. And that command was to love one another. Now, he had just shown everybody so much love. He washed their feet. He took care of them in that way. He fed them. He celebrated with them. And he said, now that you've seen my love and all the teachings that I've done over the last couple of years and in all the ways that we've, we've shown love to each other, I want you to show love to one another. And so when we come to this night and when we think about uh, what this night means for us, we have to remind ourselves of that commandment of love, that we are called to show love not only to each other in our church, but also to, to people we encounter in the grocery store and people we, we encounter in our schools and people we encounter in our jobs, we have an opportunity and a responsibility and a mandate. A mandate is like a command. We have a mandate to love one another and to show that love to them in many ways. So I want you to stop and think, we're coming to the end of our Lenten season, uh, and we're going to start a whole new uh, season coming up, the Easter season. I want you to think about how during this Easter season, you can show your love to other people and how you can show them God's love in many different ways. I'd love to hear your ideas because I just might borrow some of them. Amen. Our gospel reading is taken from the 13th chapter of the book of John. 
It was before the feast of the Passover and Jesus realized that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to Abba God. He'd always loved his own in this world and now he wanted to show how perfect this love was. The devil had already convinced Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. So during supper, Jesus, knowing that God had put all things into his own hands, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, rose from the table, took off his clothes, and wrapped a towel around his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to dry them with the towel from around his waist. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Simon said, Rabbi, you're not going to wash my feet, are you? Jesus answered, you don't realize what I'm doing, but later you will. Peter replied, you'll never wash my feet. Jesus answered, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to Jesus, then Rabbi, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus said, anyone who has taken a bath are all clean and don't need to wash anything but their feet. And you are clean, though not every one of you, for Jesus knew who was to betray him. That is why he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, Jesus put his clothes back on, returned to the table, and he said to them, do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and sovereign, and rightly so, for that is what I am. If I then, your teacher and sovereign, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I've given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. The truth of the matter is no subordinate is greater than the superior and no messenger outranks the sender. Once you know all these things, you will be blessed and you will practice them. Once Judas left, Jesus said, now is the chosen one glorified and God is glorified as well. If God has been glorified, God will in turn glorify the chosen one and will do so very soon. My little children, I won't be with you much longer. You'll look for me. And when I said to the temple authorities, I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment. Love one another. And you're to love one another way, the way I have loved you. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, that you truly love one another. And a reading from the 23rd chapter of Luke. And it was about noon, and darkness fell over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the curtain in the sanctuary was torn in two, and Jesus uttered, a loud cry and said, Abba, into your hands I commit my spirit. Saying this, Jesus breathed his last. These are our gospel readings. Now I included the reading of both the story of the Last Supper and the last word of Jesus together, partly because we have been doing our Lenten series on the seven last words, and this is the last word that we have to talk about. But also because the concept and the idea of Jesus giving his spirit over to the Father is not just happening on the cross. It's also happening as we sit at this table celebrating the Passover with his disciples. Now, Jesus is full well of the events that are about to happen. And this is why I believe he wants to celebrate his Pass this Passover meal with his disciples. It's his last time to take a deep breath and, in a sense, relax before all that drama unfolds. You see, he's been dropping hints for chapters and verses about his death and resurrection. Spoiler alert even though the disciples haven't picked up on it. As Jesus' time with his disciples is taking place, he takes on the role of a servant and he washes their feet. In that moment, Jesus has commended his spirit to God by fulfilling 
the entirety of the prophecy of the suffering servant found in the book of Isaiah. The one who came to serve the people of God, Jesus lives that out for his disciples in this beautiful example of servitude. Jesus also commits his spirit to God when he breaks the bread and he passes it to his disciples, a part of the Passover meal. This bread symbolizing the sacrifice in the temple that brought fellowship between God and the worshiper. Jesus connects himself to the bread and the wine, giving to us a tangible example of the connections between the Old and the New Testament and of the bond between God and worshiper. He commits his spirit to God through the meal that binds divine and human together in fellowship. And then on to the cross, he commits his spirit to God by being the ultimate sacrifice and by cleansing us from our sins in the holy temple of the world to come. This act, of course, has the ultimate fulfillment of both the suffering servant and the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So, yeah, there's a lot going on in this story. Oh, wait, there's even one more thing going on. Jesus does this all for us so that we can be an example as well. The disciples got that. They lived their lives from this moment on as servants. And they also provided a tangible connection between the human and the divine. And they gave their lives in this service to others. They took the lessons of this Last Supper and they brought them to reality. Which brings me to us. Here we are on this holy night. Our world is very different right now than it's ever been before. Well, at least for us. And we are now the guests at this table with Jesus. Watching Jesus commit his spirit to God. And in a few moments, we'll be asked to walk away from this table and bring those same lessons to reality in the same way that the disciples were asked to. That means that we have to be the servant who reaches out to those in need. We have to provide comfort and compassion to those needing a sense of peace. When we commit our spirits to God we are to reach out to the least, the lost, and the last. We are the ones called to wash the feet of the others in our world. As we walk away from this table, we are also called to bring a connection to others between human and divine. We should provide a glimpse of the world to come in our language, in our actions, and in our witness. When we do that, we commit our spirits to God. And yes, we are also called to give our lives. Now, I'm not saying that we all need to run out and seek out crucifixion. Thank the Lord that barbaric practice was abolished centuries ago. We are still called to give our lives by thinking of others more than ourselves. And for many of us, that could definitely feel like dying on a cross. But it is our calling. Committing our spirit to God means that at times we're willing to set ourselves, our wants, our desires aside for the sake of of another. When practiced correctly, it can be a beautiful gift to another human being. 
As this Lenten season draws to a close, we as the people of God must be willing to say, Abba, into your hands I commit my spirit. When we do that, we will change. Our congregation will change and our world will change. Watch what amazing things happen when we focus on God and not ourselves. Amen. United by the servant love of God in Christ, we pray this holy night for the needs of the world. You call your people to hand on what we receive from you. Form all baptized into teachers of faith. From one generation to the next, give your church hunger for your promises in the sacraments and joy in receiving and sharing your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your creation provides all that we need. Cleanse and protect the water you have given from washing and drinking, water on which all life depends. Sustain crops and herds that provide food. Teach us how to live so that there is enough for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You redeemed your people from slavery. Preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. Establish just leadership in places of tyranny and peace in place of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus loved his followers to the end. Grant assurance of that love to all who need it. Those living with guilt, those struggling to forgive, those who are lonely or overlooked. Heal the sick and embrace the dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus washed the feet of the one who betrayed him. Inspire this congregation's ministries of service that we love as Jesus loved us. Give us renewed courage to serve. Bless the ministries of all in this congregation. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your glory shown in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we thank you for generations of the faithful who have proclaimed our Lord's death. Unite us with them in hope until he comes again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For these and all our prayers, O God, in the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far away, so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? I cry all day, my God, but you never answer. I call all night long and sleep deserts me. But you, Holy One, you sit enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted and you rescued them. They cried to you and were saved. They trusted you and were never disappointed. Yet here I am, more worm than human, the scorn of humanity, an object of ridicule. All who see me mock me. They shake their heads and sneer, you trust in God, ha! Let God save you now. If God is your friend, let God rescue you. You drew me out of the womb. You nestled me in my mother's bosom. You cradled me in your lap from my birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my God. Don't stand aside now that trouble is near. I have no one to help me. My enemies are like a herd of bulls surrounding me. They are the strong bulls of Bashan closing in on me. With jaws open wide to swallow me, they're like lions tearing their prey and roaring. I am like water draining away. My bones are disjointed. My heart is like wax melting inside me. My strength is dried up like a piece of clay pottery, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me down in dusty death. A pack of dogs surround me. A gang, gang of brigands close in on me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones, and there they stare at me gloating. They divide my garments among them, and they cast lots for my clothing. But you, Adonai, don't be far off. My strength, hurry to help me. Rescue my life from the sword, my dear life from the power of these dogs. Save me from the lion's mouth, my poor soul from the wild bull's horns. Then I will proclaim your name to my sisters and brothers and praise you in the full assembly. You who worship Adonai, give praise. Daughters of Leah, daughters of Rachel, glorify Adonai. Sons of Jacob, fall down and worship. For God has not despised, not disdained, the suffering of those in pain. God didn't hide but answered them when they cried for help. You are the theme of my praise in the great assembly, and I will fulfill my vows in the presence of your worshipers. Those who are poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek you will give you praise, long life to their hearts. The whole earth from one end to the other will remember and come back to you. All the families of the nations will bow down to you. For yours is the kingdom, you ruler of the nations. Those who had feasted and devoured the poor, now they'll bow down and the most affluent in the land will kneel before you. They all go down to the dust, and none can keep themselves alive. 
but my children will be faithful to you. They will be told about Adonai for generations to come. They will come and proclaim your justice to a people yet unborn. All this Adonai has done. 